In this video, we're just going to play around a little bit with the CSS for the site and show you what the different certain elements and certain attributes do with uh, the site as far as how your style sheet and the CSS in it will affect different things. So we're just going to play around a little bit with, again, with the CSS and uh, hopefully help you to learn a little bit more about how CSS works and some of the power of it. So if you look here at our site, you'll notice that it's changed quite a bit. Um, I went ahead and I changed some different colors around and did all of this editing in, in the style sheet to give it a different kind of look and feel. And so I'm going to walk through our code and actually show you some of the things that I changed. And then we'll just play around a little bit more so you can get an even better idea of just how the CSS works. So let's go to our code here. And I'll just walk through top to bottom what I changed. So you'll notice here that we have the background. And I actually changed this background color to kind of the, a whitish color uh, just to give it, you know, so it wasn't completely white just to give it a little bit of color um, but nothing too dramatic then I also changed this font family here now what the font family does is it actually lets you specify what fonts you would like used in what precedence so our first font here is Calibri and this is the one that we would like used first and then if that one isn't installed on the user's computer then we want to use Tahoma and then so on down the line to Arial and so the way this works is if um, a certain computer that is viewing your site has this font installed on it then it will display that font if not then it will go to the next one if it doesn't have that one it will go to the next one it will go on down your line that you specify here all the way until if it doesn't have any of them it will default to Times New Roman which pretty much every computer has so uh, that's the way the font family works so you can just specify which fonts you would like and use in what order uh, using this font family declaration or attribute here. So we change that as well. So if uh, we actually come back over to the site, you'll see that it's not in Times New Roman anymore. It's in that Calibri font. So if we go back to our code, um, you can also see I changed the links, both the color of the links and the hover. And if we go to our site, you see right down here, now the color of the links is this bluish color. And when you hover them, it turns this brown color. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about why I chose those specific colors uh, here in a minute. Um, you'll notice the header, I gave it a background color, or I changed the background color to this kind of this dark brown. So the way I do this is I usually pick just a couple colors, two or three colors that have you know, either some kind of, they're either complementary or supplementary and uh, they looked good together. So in this case, I have a dark brown, I have a light brown, and then I have kind of a baby bluish type color, which uh, there's a lot of color schemes out there that use kind of a, a, a darker, not super dark, but a little bit darker brown and kind of a baby blue. You see that quite a bit. And it's usually a pretty good color scheme, so I just chose that one. And if you come back to our site, you'll see that you know, that's kind of the color scheme that we have here. And then I also chose kind of a lighter brown to use for the navigation bar, just so we don't have you know a nice solid brown coming all the way down, and that's our only color. So if we go back to the code, then this is our dark brown color. And then once I've chosen those colors, I try to keep them consistent throughout. So if I'm going to use, if I'm going to want a dark brown, I use the same dark brown throughout. If I want to use a light brown, I use the same light brown, the same blue, and so on. So you'll notice that when I highlight this in our editor here, it actually shows up multiple times. And that's simply because I'm using the same color brown when I want to use a dark brown. So our hover for our links, and if we come back to our footer here, when we hover, this dark brown that's here when I hover is the same as this one up here, which is the same as these links right here uh, when I'm not hovering them. Those are dark brown as well. And then when I hover, this background color is that same dark brown color, as well as I've used the same light brown color. When I hover, that light brown that now the uh, text changes to is the same as this navigation bar here. And again, if we go back to our code and I go to our uh, hover here, you'll notice that this same color shows up there and it shows up here. So it shows up multiple times in those two places. And this is our background color 
and this is our hover text color. So it helps keep the site consistent in, in terms of color. I've also used the dark brown color as far as uh, the paragraph color for text. And if we go back to the site, this text in here is that dark brown color. And so if we go back into our code over here, then you can kind of see we've kind of already covered the majority of things that I changed. I, I changed the background, I changed the font family, I changed the link color and the hover color, I changed the paragraph color, I changed the header background color, I changed the um, background color for the navigation bar, I changed the link color, I changed the hover background and link color, um, and I changed the color of the heading for the content left. So if we go back to the site, this heading color right here, I changed it and I changed the sidebar heading color again to that same blue color. So if you look over here, this blue, this color right here, I changed. And then I changed the footer, kind of as I mentioned before, I changed the paragraph color to be um, brown right here. I changed the background of the footer to be this color right here. And if we go back to the site, we'll see we have that color and we've got this brown color as the paragraph text. And then of course, this, these links go according to the overall links for the site. So as you can see, I didn't really change a whole lot. And honestly, the actual coding part of it probably took about five minutes. You'll spend more time trying to figure out exactly what colors you want to use where than you will actually coding um, the 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 style sheet to to make it look like you want so um, that's one of the advantages of knowing code is you can make changes really really quick and here's the really cool part about this is that I changed all this and so the way we've set up our site I changed it in one place and it changes throughout the entire site which is pretty sweet so this you could have thousands of pages and as long as you set them up the way I showed you to in the initial video, they'll sh these changes will occur across the board just like this and everything will be right in line. Uh, it'll show up ex nice and structured exactly how you want it. So I should give you some insight into like, you can create a super fancy site that it really cuts down on time because you can spend more of your time creating a super fancy site that you only have to edit one time that'll appear across your entire site instead of having to make changes on every single page of your site which would consume all all that time so by building your sites this way it really frees up your cre creativity to focus on being able you know focus on the creative part of your site and creating a, a really killer stunning site um, as opposed to having to worry about okay now how am I going to implement all the code implementing the code is easy the harder part, again, is going to be actually coming up with the design and, and making all the elements and working with Photoshop to create all of it. You'll spend more of your time doing that than you will editing the code. So um, I guess my point with this video to get across to you is just how easy it is to make changes to a site with CSS when you set up your site up the way that I've showed you. Uh, it's really incredibly easy because all those site changes happen across uh, the entire site. And so uh, you can make massive changes uh, just in a few seconds. And again, we edited one file. This is the style sheet file. We edited one file. You could go back into these other individual files and you could start structuring things differently. You know, and you could mess with certain things there to make your site uh, look differently. For example, if instead of having this stretch all the way across from side to side, maybe you want to have a site where it's where it's all fixed width and um, you know, you know, you have a big like box right here in the center, like you see with some sites or a lot of sites. Really, maybe you want to do it that way. So you could go back into and, and in, again in a matter of minutes, you could just change up this code, maybe a little bit, come into the um, style sheet here, and and change the way things work. And suddenly you would have exactly what you want. And you spend all your time focusing on designing, and changing the code is really simple. So. That's one of the things that I really want to get across to you is a lot of people feel kind of stuck or like glued to editors like Front Page and Dreamweaver and, and the different editors are out there. But once you learn the code itself, you have so much more power and you can do things a lot faster typically 
than you can using those programs. Now, I've never used Dreamweaver, so I hear it's a little bit better, but front page I used to use quite a bit, and <laughs> it's incredibly limiting, or at least it was. I don't know how it is now, but it's incredibly limiting, and I would say no matter what, knowing the code is always um, going to be better for you than, than being stuck to some kind of program that will always have certain limitations to it. So, um, incredibly powerful way uh, of, of creating your sites and as you can see it's actually really easy really simple and the more you the more you learn the more um, the better designs that you can create so what I would encourage you to do at this point is um, go out there and learn some more about CSS and HTML we've only covered some of the basics out here all these attributes in here there's there's hundreds of attributes that you can apply to an element that will do all kinds of different things you know, so go out there and learn some of those and see the different things that you can do and just play with it. I, I would honestly suggest you create a test site that you just use just for learning, just to play with that you're, it's okay to break or explode or whatever, that you use just simply to learn and get better at, at uh, code. Um, and get out there and just play with all the different attributes. You know, you can Google CSS and you'll find all kinds of references of different things that you can do. Um, with CSS. Same with HTML. Again, we've only covered some of the basic stuff, really basic stuff as far as uh, structuring your site. You know, you can go out there and learn about forms. You can go out there and learn about all different kinds of things, uh, ways that you can use HTML. And of course, if you feel so inclined, the same with PHP. Now, again, the, 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 from the broad perspective, the things to keep in mind is that, is that HTML deals with mostly with structure uh, CSS deals mostly with design and PHP deals mostly with um, interactivity and processing of information and things like that so um, for a, a good example of that is a form if you have a form you're gonna have HTML that's gonna actually create the structure of the form you can add CSS or you can add IDs to it that allow you to style it using CSS but then the actual processing of the form data is going to be sent to a PHP script typically or ASP or whatever language but in this case we'll say PHP so it's going to be sent to a PHP script to process that data and do something with it so that that's a good example of the different uh, functions that each set of code uh, does so learning um, PHP HTML and CSS really kind of gives you a strong foundation for creating whatever you want. The only other language that I'd really say or languages that you might look into are things like JavaScript or Ajax and the reason is is um, PHP is what's called a server-side uh, language so it happens on your server whereas JavaScript and Ajax are more client-side and so they happen they actually uh, work with the browser as opposed to working with your server and so there's certain instances where you're going to want something like that and anyway so those are those are some things to look at for you but um, learning what you're learning here is incredibly powerful so uh, again that's uh, some of the CSS now let's just take a moment and just kind of play around uh, with some of this stuff so I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to change um, some different elements and actually I want to show you a resource that I use now there's a specific URL that you can get to use to get to this, but it's pretty long. So I just I'll just Google hex color, and this very top uh, choice right here, I'll select, and it give, gives you this nice color picker that you can come in and you can drag around like this, and you can use it to get different. You show see it shows you the hex color or the hex code number for that color. You can use that to create those colors. So. Uh, let's say we want to go with like a blue, like a baby blue. And so we go with this color. Actually, let's not do baby blue. Let's do a more of a kind of royalish blue. All right. So what I like to do is then I'll come back over. Once I get my color, I'll come back over here and I'll just come to the bottom here. And I'll type it in blue and I'll paste it. That way I know I don't have to keep popping back and forth. I have it right there. And then let's do kind of a... A greenish color and I want a little bit lighter let's see what we get here yeah, let's do something like that okay and we come back over here and again I'll just type green 
Of course, if I have a dark and a light, then I'll start type dark blue, dark blue or light blue or whatever. So, and then I'll just take these and I'll just copy these in different places. So, let's make the header background this blue color, and let's make the navigation bar this green color. All right, so I changed those two things, and if we save, and I'll upload this to our site. All right, and if we go back to our site, and we refresh, notice that that now changed that blue color. And let's go back into, or in that green color as well. All right, so now we still have our old hover effect, so let's go back in. And let's go and change our, since our background is green, let's go in and we'll change our link color to blue. Okay, so we want our link color to be blue. And then we want our background to be blue when we hover. And we want our link to be green when we hover. Okay, so we save that, we upload, come back over to our site, refresh, now we have our blue and when we hover our background goes blue and our link goes green, just like that, okay? And so that gives you an idea of just how easy it is to change, change different things and again, because of the way we've set up our site, when I click or when I change something it changes it across the entire site so this what's really powerful about this is that a lot of the themes or a lot of the uh, different software programs out there like WordPress and some of the other ones they use a very similar structure to this for creating their themes so if you understand how this works then uh, integrating the uh, code to allow it to work with a word say a WordPress theme is incredibly easy because it's based on this structure so you could actually take what you've learned here and create a WordPress theme with just a little bit extra uh, knowledge and then of course if you want to get into advanced stuff with WordPress then obviously there's even more to learn there but just creating a theme in and of itself um, I mean you could do you you know the majority of what you need to know to be able to do that so this this information here is incredibly powerful um, and you know you could take it and, and if you wanted to say start selling your own themes or start a business creating themes for say WordPress or, or just web creating websites for other people as a career I mean what you're learning here you could really it's it's the majority of what people know who do that of course they all have their own specialties like you know working with Photoshop or or, or the design side with CSS or maybe the code side with PHP uh, or different things like that and even they may even be more specialized where they create just WordPress themes or just WordPress plugins or, or maybe a little combination of both but um, I mean again what you're learning here is the foundation so it's incredibly powerful powerful stuff and I hope you can see that at this point so um, again that's a little bit about CSS and how you can use it to change your site um, how easy it is to change your site. I hope that it was helpful for you and uh, I'll talk to you again soon in the other videos. Thanks